Thank you for joining me. I'm Gord Long. A reminder before we begin, do not trade from any of these slides. They are commentary for educational and discussion purposes only. Always consult a professional financial advisor before making any investment decisions. In our last two video releases, we completed a two-part series laying out what to expect if a market topping process was occurring. We received a lot of positive feedback on the videos, which we appreciated. However, the feedback indicated that some may have incorrectly translated what we laid out. The simplest way of clarifying this is to say that the coming market scare is not the crash, but rather only the beginning of what is to come. Appreciating the difference may save you a lot of pain and potential losses. Everyone is so used to the market quickly rebounding and heading for new highs that even a 10% crash will only be seen as an opportunity to buy the dip. The coming market sell-off will in fact present buy the dip opportunities, but it will only be part of violent counter rallies that occur in bear markets, if in fact we are entering a bear market. Bear markets are something that few today are familiar with and are likely to be confused by. It is our current assessment, and I stress current, that this is the beginnings of an intermediate correction, which will last into the fall of 2022 U.S. midterm elections. We see markets going higher, but not until some serious divergences and fundamentals are corrected during this period. This has forced us to do a third video in this series to try and make sure everyone at least understands where we stand, whether you agree with us or not. As such, we will cover the points outlined here. Let's start with a quick follow-up to what has transpired in the market since we did Part 1 and 2 to see if things are unfolding as we warned. We have been witnessing the wholesale and rapid withdrawal of central bank stimulus globally. Two weeks ago, the ECB was the second giant to taper bond purchases. Previously, the Bank of Japan had already ended QE. Bank of Canada shed 15% of its assets. Bank of England and Reserve Bank Australia are tapering. Reserve Bank of New Zealand quit QE cold turkey. The Reichsbank will end QE this year, and the Fed is expected to soon announce QE tapering and for it to possibly begin as early as November. All these reductions in the rate of QE will soon quickly turn negative as unprecedented fiscal spending and its associated bond supply side onslaught soon hits global treasury markets. You'll notice how the S&P is running ahead of the global central bank balance sheet growth and is starting to turn down as we witness weakness in the equity markets as we predicted. The S&P 500 shown in green has completely disconnected from the U.S. corporate profit measures shown in red. CEOs across the board are warning of the consequences supply chain and labor shortages are having on profits, which will begin to show up as Q3 earnings begin being reported in a few weeks. We warned of this in Part 2 with our expected market weakness potentially hitting in October. We showed this S&P 500 chart in Part 2 when we discussed Phi cluster dates, Phi mate dates, and divergences. This is what has transpired as of Sunday, September the 19th. We have broken the 50-day moving average in red and lower trend channel in black. This is the first occurrence of anything since the COVID market sell-off that could possibly be considered as potential technical damage. It is minor, but nevertheless further evidence of what we expect to soon see. More is to come, and probably very quickly. Even something as minor as this makes major headlines in financial papers, such as Barron's. It is like no one has seen this before. Hold on, they're about to get a real lesson in market behavior. It is our view we will soon test the 20 weekly moving average shown in red, but even then, as you can see in this weekly chart, is still rather modest. What we are beginning and should take away from this chart is an emerging scenario of lower lows and lower highs that can be expected. I didn't have time to include this chart in part two, which shows the silver gold ratio versus the S&P 500. This is the silver gold ratio, not the well-followed gold silver ratio shown here at the top. 
we have found it to be a good early warning sign of market problems for reasons we haven't time to explain. What we want to point out is how its 50-day moving average cross of its 200-day moving average cross was a warning prior to the COVID market sell-off in 2020. It has done this before for us. You will notice in the top right, we have the same setup. I have updated and simplified the silver gold ratio chart here to reflect the recent drop in silver prices. You can see the red bars in the top right. And this is with gold also falling heavily last week with volume shown in the bottom spiking. If we mirror trend channels between crosses and use the COVID sell-off as a benchmark, we can see where we may be headed. It suggests the 200-day moving average at the bottom for the S&P 500 may be in the works over the next 12 months. Now we need to discuss some realities. First, this is the most telegraphed market sell-off I have seen in decades. Secondly, the market can be expected to always do what delivers the most pain to the maximum number of people. Thirdly, the option skew pricing, shown here and which we discussed in the last video, says everyone is now hedged for this with out-of-the-money options so expensive that you can hardly make money using them to short the market and take advantage of downside. I have rarely seen this before. To put reality into perspective, it is usually the best to revisit the big picture. Instead of looking at what we expect this week and in the next few weeks, to look at things from what secular changes may in fact be in the winds. Let us look at monthly charts and the cycles in play that have been with us for 10 years now. This monthly chart goes back to the financial crisis with the repeating cycles shown in gray half circles and sine waves at the bottom. Added to it are three parabolic curves. The dashed red parabolic curve was the initial parabolic curve connecting all the low points prior to the COVID market spike down. The solid red one is adjusted to reflect the COVID shock spike distortion. The third is the dotted red parabola rising to the current top. What we see is the possibilities of a market correction that can last until the end of 2022, approximating the U.S. midterm election, before reaching the cycle low and touching the dashed red parabola at approximately 3270. We'll come back to that number again. We see the MATA SII momentum indicator rolling over and possibly hitting its support line during the same period, possibly before bouncing. After this, the market rises to form a double top or to set new market highs as we enter 2025. We don't know what that means yet, nor does anybody. If we assume this is just another correction, though a major one, we can guess that the correction will form some sort of corrective three count drawn within the yellow range bounds. This is only for, for discussion purposes. It will not form this pattern, but it will form some measure of what is called a corrective structure, if in fact we are correct. You can't do anything with this chart until you do some further work. This is what I will call a thought experiment, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Shown here, we tune the cycles into a little better fitting at the bottom and use the 12 and 24 month monthly moving averages with Bollinger Bands to see how price has been contained by them. The straight uplift of this market tracks exactly their upper Bollinger Bands, which is a clear warning of a major corrective consolidation ahead and supports our prior charts. These are common things that we look for as trend followers. Shown here is a simplified version of the MATA SII proprietary chart that has steered us to safety prior to the dot-com bubble implosion and the 2008 financial crisis. When the red line crosses the blue line prior to the dot-com bubble breaking down, it gave us plenty of time to exit and prepare for the major decline ahead. Exactly the same thing occurred in 2008 during the financial crisis. Since then, the red line has never crossed the blue line. It has come close, but has never given us our exit signal. As you can see, we are a long ways from potential receiving such a signal. But this still gives us some useful information because the market distortions are so large to even approach a warning cross would involve a major market correction. We can see that key oscillators associated with this signal are turning down as the money flow index and a proprietary MATA SII momentum indicator. However, many have not, which suggests any period of correction will be measured in quarters, not months. 
Furthering our thought experiment, we have found that to use our proprietary market timer is to adjust the price axis to a logarithmic scale, which we have done here. You can see we have placed two dotted red lines connecting major price points since the 2008 financial crisis, as well as a shaded support zone. We have also found that in major corrections where the price increases have been aggressive, that the correction is usually equally aggressive and often mirrors the slope of the prior rise. As part of our thought experiment, we have drawn in a 57 degree price rise matching what we have witnessed and a 57 degree price drop as a potential reference point. We have drilled down to better focus on the current situation for this set of warning lines. If the market is to correct from here, it will correct in a five wave impulsive fashion or a three wave corrective fashion. A possible impulsive wave structure has been laid in as shown here, which would allow the blue and red signal lines to better round down, band, and possibly cross. We don't know if this will occur, but it begins to give us a perspective to frame some general thinking. We've roughed in a three-wave corrective structure here and truncated it at the 3270 number, which you saw in a prior chart. If the market is going to bounce and move to new highs or double top, it may look like this. Remember, major tops are often M tops, head and shoulders formation, or dome tops. Time will tell, but we're clearly talking about a potential bearish 2022. I have overlaid both scenarios here. The red box shows that as often is experienced, both scenarios initially match very closely. This best describes the overall confusion in the markets during the early stages of any correction. We at Mata SII are presently building our thinking around a touch of the red signal indicator approximating 4,050 on the S&P 500 in Q4. However, remember, whether we see an impulse of our corrective structure, it will be a five count till it touches the completion of the black one label here, or what may be an A wave corrective. What is critical is to not trade this thinking, but to understand that any initial down movement in the market will involve aggressive movements in both directions to confuse as many investors as possible and punish margin holders and begin to weaken the use of margin. This takes time. This is not going to be a V-top, though that is exactly what it may feel like. Don't bet the farm, but be patient and look for continuous confirmations. What are some of the confirmations to look for? besides what we discussed in part two, to begin to fit the actual emerging pattern over our thought experiment. Don't forget our thought experiments assumes the near turn top is in. We haven't confirmed this yet before we get carried away about betting the family farm. The first is credit. One way to watch credit is to watch high yield and investment grade spreads. We expect to be reminded quite soon just how critical the Fed's liquidity injections are for a binary world where the alternatives are simple. Either the Fed prints hundreds of billions every quarter, bringing the fiat system ever closer to death, or we crash. Last March, capital markets, as we once knew them, ceased really to exist. That's when the Powell Fed crossed the Rubicon, even as Ben Bernanke dared not breach and announced that it would start buying single-name corporate bonds and ETFs under what it called its Secondary Market Corporate Credit Facility, or SMCCF, with both investment grade and high yield names eligible for purchases in the process, effectively nationalizing the corporate bond market. Purchases under this facility, which were meant to reassure and stabilize the corporate bond market, continued until December, at which point, with stocks at new all-time highs, the Fed announced the cessation of its corporate bond purchases and entered the beginning stages of fully winding down the SMCCF. As of the first week of September, the Federal Reserve has now been able to sell off the entirety of its corporate bond portfolio with no effect yet on the market's microstructure. Curiously, this also comes at a time when the latest TICS report shows that in July, foreign investors were net sellers of corporate bonds for the first time this year. We need to watch very closely for any deterioration in high yield prices, as shown here by Barclays High Yield Bond ETFs, which hasn't yet broken down. We expect it to, and it's an important trigger point. Or the high yield index option adjusted spread, 
which compares high-yield treasury, which normally always spikes when credit markets become unstable. It is yet to show any immediate warnings. However, when they come, they'll come quickly and is a sure sign of more serious equity market conditions, another important signal you need to wait for. We have shown this risk-on, risk-off indicator in our newsletter recently. Since the 2008 financial crisis, it has warned of pending risk-off when the junk TLT ratio falls and risk on when it rises. We expect after a near-term market scare for risk on to temporarily push up before we get a strong risk off signal later in Q4. We also need to watch the yield curve to determine important elements of where we stand in any correction. We compare our risk off indicator to the U.S. 10-year Treasury note. The correlations are clear as shown by the pink warning boxes. We currently expect a rise in the 10-year Treasury yield as marked by the green arrows. If this occurs, it will steepen the yield curve, which has been a strong indicator as represented by the yellow and pink areas for the yield curve on the top pane and the S&P 500 on the lower pane. The red arrows currently indicate what we should expect short term. Remember, these are signals we need to see confirmed before concluding anything about any potential market corrections in terms of seriousness and degree of sell-off. This is how we currently translate these possibilities as they would impact the equity markets. We also need to watch the U.S. dollar closely. A weakening often moves U.S. equity prices higher, while a strengthening dollar moves prices lower, if only for conversion reasons. It has been our view since we labeled the right shoulder, shown in black, that the dollar would rise to approximately 94 on the DXY before beginning to fall to complete wave B shown here in red. The chart has appeared unaltered since the U.S. presidential election. We came very close to our 94 target label shown here by the blue D box before falling off. We're watching closely to get further confirmation that the U.S. dollar is in fact headed lower. A strong indicator that will be the case is the euro USD cross shown here. The euro is likely to bounce up near term between now and year end before heading lower. This move is likely to weaken the U.S. dollar. Bigger deteriorations in the dollar will be centered on trade, current, account, and fiscal deficit deteriorations, which we have discussed in videos specifically about the U.S. dollar. We have added the U.S. dollar window pane to the bottom of this comparative chart of risk-off, the 10-year U.S. Treasury note, the S&P 500, and the U.S. dollar as represented by the DXY. Notice the expected arrows between now and year end. These are the confirmations we are looking for to clarify our thought experiment. Don't forget for a moment that if things get serious, the powers to be will make unexpected announcements, alter measures, and change financial restrictions behind the scenes. You can count on this. They are not going to allow the markets to collapse in any serious fashion. This has become common practice over the last decade and a half to keep this debt edifice from collapsing, and we can expect no less. We need to remember we have distorted credit markets with lack of price discovery and mispricing of risk. We have political policies drivers centered around the debt ceiling, a $3.5 trillion continuing resolution bill, and a $1.2 trillion infrastructure, all of which will have profound impact on inflation. Too much money chasing too little goods, as in current shortages, is the definition of inflation. We've effectively nationalized the U.S. bond market. Who is going to buy the U.S. debt? This is a completely unanswered question, short of monetizing debt and devaluing the U.S. dollar. The Federal Reserve is trapped through policies of unsound money reporting distortions and policies oriented towards manipulating the market versus fixing blatant structural and fiscal global imbalances. All these will have impacts we must expect and you must protect your investments from. We also have a unique year-end coming. The bill before Congress will potentially increase taxes in a historic fashion. Investors and corporations can be expected to react as soon as they approach finalization. The 20% increase in capital gains tax, which will approach 40% alone, is dramatic and can be counted on for tax loss selling by year end to avoid tax payable in 2022 or later years. Our thought experiment is about keeping our perspective during the expected coming market volatility. Major tops take time. 
They are normally dome, arms, or head and shoulder formations. Look for these versus just a straight down sell off. Pay attention to these signals. Is the market top in and is it a short term, intermediate term, or long term top? Are we seeing lower lows and lower highs? Are the counter rallies stronger and in which direction? Bear markets have notoriously strong counter rallies. What kind of wave structures are we getting and in which direction? Impulse of five counts or corrective three counts? Watch to see if the signal arrows on the right are playing out and adjust accordingly. As I always remind you in these videos, remember politicians and central banks will print the money to solve any and all problems. Until such time as no one will take the money or it is of no value. That day is still in the future, so take advantage of the opportunities as they currently exist. Investing is always easier when you know with relative certainty how the powers to be will react. Your chances of success go up dramatically. The powers to be are now effectively trapped by policies of fiat currencies, unsound money, political polarization, and global policy paralysis. I'd like to take a moment as a reminder, do not trade from any of these slides. They are strictly for educational and discussion purposes only. As negative as these comments often are, there has seldom actually been a better time for investing. However, it requires careful analysis and not following what has traditionally been the true and tried approaches. Do your reading and make sure you have a knowledgeable and well-informed financial advisor. So until we talk again, may 2021 turn out to be an outstanding investment year for you and your family. And I sincerely thank you for listening.